So in particular, that match for the Owen tonight, but also the last week in the women's division, you've seen three great matches this weekend with Sky Blue in her hometown picking up the win over Anna Jay, and then Willow Nightingale last night here getting a great win against Nyla in the tournament. And of course, Willow then had a great match tonight for the World Championship of AEW, and Willow's been a great champion for New Japan right now. And then uh, we had a great match tonight with Athena, the Ring of Honor Women's World Champion, taking on young Billy Starks. I thought that was a great match on the Zero Hour. And we still have the last year's final to come in the first round with Dr. Brett Baker versus Ruby Soho. So a loaded bracket there on the women's side. Then we're coming up on this big show Thursday night. We're taping here in Hamilton. It's going to be on Saturday night on TNT. It's a huge collision. We've been trying to get off to a huge start with collision. We wanted big matches. So just from this Owen Hart Foundation tournament, we have Samoa Joe versus Roderick Strong, which is a match I felt very strongly about. Two top stars in AEW, the exact same spirit as what Brian was just saying, like trying to use the strength of the roster and build matches people would really want to see all over the world on TV and here in Canada. And I really believe Samoa Joe versus Roderick Strong this week, Saturday night on Collision, is one of those kinds of matches. And I thought it was something that people would want to come Thursday night live to see at Hamilton. And then uh, Dustin Rhodes and Hobbs, and also, uh, of course, Juice and Starks after the great eight-man tag, which I thought last night was an amazing match. Uh, speaking of CM Punk and the great matches, I thought that last night the eight-man tag main event on Collision was tremendous. So having that, I thought, uh, made a lot of sense next week coming off that and the rivalry between Jay and Juice against Ricky Starks. It's been going on for a long time. So there's a lot of matches I thought were really important, and that's why those matches were the ones I put in the bracket. Uh, so I really kind of was going off that same philosophy of Brian, like I want to use the best people in AEW and make the best matches for the fans all, all over the world and also for the people in the arenas. And obviously we want to use a lot of our great Canadian stars here too and have been featuring a lot of Canadian stars, including tonight here on the pay-per-view where we had a lot of big names. But in the Owen, I was specifically looking for some of those matches I just named. So for some of the uh, independent, non-signed talent, they've got a unique experience. We've got Collision, the pay-per-view here in Toronto, two shows in Hamilton, so for Ontario, unsigned talent, lots of unique opportunity to kind of showcase their stuff, and we're seeing some of that. Do you have an eye on anybody not signed that you want to name drop, or is that something someone else looks after and reports back to you? No, I do a lot of that. I've been running that uh, process myself. I get people recommended to me, and a lot of times that's how people end up on Dark, is somebody from a recommendation, and then that's sometimes that's the first time I see people, but I also book a lot of people for Dark, and then the developmental system, whether it's uh, uh, Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, or Ring of Honor. I do all the paperwork, I book all the matches, so everybody who's in every match, I know who they are, I put them in the match, and I decide who goes out, you know, and out and who goes out when, who goes out first, who goes out second, and then they go out, they wrestle each other, and uh, I try to make good matches. Styles make fights, and I think tonight was great matchmaking. Tonight was a little different, and, and of course, Forbidden Door is a little different because we do work side by side with New Japan Pro Wrestling, but the production team and, and overall the point man is me. And I think from the standpoint of the developmental, yeah, so I'm looking to bring a lot of people in. I get recommended a lot of names when we go to different places. You know, we were in Chicago last week, so you use somebody like Gringo Loco that's local there, but sometimes I would fly in a Gringo Loco because he's tremendous. Uh, there are people here in Ontario that I would use that are local, uh, absolutely, it's a great opportunity for some of these people that have been wrestling. As it is everywhere where we, we do, you know, uh, our shows, whether we bring in talent, enhancement talent, frankly, sometimes, but a lot of times also I give people opportunities in these kinds of matches and introduce new talent that way. It's a different developmental system than it used to be. I was a lot more hands-on in some ways because of Daly's place, you couldn't be more hands-on. Like, I live my life on top of these people. We live in a bubble together. And, like, that's where, like, acts like, the acclaimed two guys that were, frankly, again, like enhancement wrestlers and are now one of the most popular tag teams in the entire world. And they, together with Billy, they're one of the most popular trios in the world and all of that. It started with Max and Anthony together. I saw them and separately and I wanted to put them together and I brought them into my Daily's Place office and they work matches originally in the Daily's Place dark. And then their chemistry with Billy, really a lot of that got going then through elevation. Because on the road before Dynamite got started, I would book the four best tag teams in eight-man tags before the show started that I wasn't using on Dynamite, and a lot of times it would be the Gun Club and the Acclaimed against two tag teams. And that's where the chemistry with the Guns and the Acclaimed, and Billy and the Acclaimed got started. So, uh, and now in Ring of Honor, I love uh, bringing in talent local and giving them opportunities. When we were doing shows 
in Florida for Ring of Honor I've done that, or whether we're doing it on the road, that's a great opportunity because now Ring of Honor is not developmental for AEW by any means, but it is a place where I can bring people in off TV to some extent and give them matches because in the streaming format, I have a lot of flexibility. I can put together totally different kinds of shows. That's why I felt so comfortable doing Collision because I think when people saw Ring of Honor and they're like, wow, this is a lot different. There are things that I wouldn't necessarily see on AEW, like first of all, uh, you no know, commercials, right? And then uh, some of the talent I feature, I get matches in some cases, maybe a different amount of time or showcase some matches more than I would in other places, but the level of the champions and the championships I think is as good as anywhere in wrestling. I mean, Ring of Honor with a group of champions like Claudio, Samoa Joe, Athena, Shibata-san, uh, and the Mobile Embassy, it's a great group of champions we have there. And I believe, um, really, like the developmental system has changed, but it's transformed over time. And now I think going on the road to different places, we do try to bring in independent talent, but I also go out and let, let a lot of the talent here go out and work independent matches. So that also gives a lot of people an opportunity to go find people like, oh, I had a great match with this person on the road. You should bring them in and give them a chance. And that's how I, we found a lot of different people here. Wheeler Yuta is a great example of that. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's my long-winded answer to it, but I think it's an important question because developing wrestlers for the future is like one of the most important things a company could do. Thanks. Hey, TK, uh, James Jordan of Wide World of Wrestling. It's got a two-part for you here. I spoke with Sean Spears last week on my show about the possibility of going somewhere like out east, like Montreal. What are the cars for that? And also, have you played Fight Forever by chance? And if so, uh, what's your favorite mode in that game, or what are you looking forward to most to play? Well, it's a great question. I think for Fight Forever, uh, the ladder matches, we've had great ladder matches in AEW, and certainly ladder matches in Fight Forever are going to be great, and we have a lot of uh, great wrestlers that are in there and also a lot of great wrestlers people will be able to download so I, I have enjoyed playing a bit of Fight Forever but I can't wait to uh, you know play a bit more of no I have a lot of free time but at least now it's the off season for both the Premier League and uh, the NFL but we have a lot of work to do in the transfer window for the Premier League talk board uh, so uh, it's a busy time for us and also the Fulham US Tour is starting which is pretty cool because the fullest Fulham US Tour by the way coincides with the collision dates both running the East Coast loop so that's nice and uh, so I'm very excited uh, about Fight Forever. Like I said, uh, really enjoyed playing a little bit of the ladder match mode. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be really, really cool. It's a great time for us. We were very excited about this summer. So many cool things happening in AEW with, of course, tonight's event, the launch of Collision, and now Fight Forever, the release is imminent, and uh, building up to the biggest event in the history of our company and really historic event in wrestling and AEW All In, where a lot of these questions have been about. So uh, very excited about Fight Forever, and I think the timing is really good for us. It feels like we have a lot of good momentum right now. Is there anything else about that you wanted to ask? Well, other than just, is there a chance that you guys will go out to Montreal at any point? Sorry, that was the other part of your question. I know it was a two-part. Uh, and so I think that would be great. I'm very open to that. Uh, we have a lot of events here in the coming weeks in Canada, but obviously Montreal is a great wrestling market with a ton of history. And I would love to do shows in Montreal. And I think it would make a lot of sense to do shows in Montreal. And we want to keep coming to Canada. It's been great support for us on TV. We've just done some uh, of our best ratings ever in Canada. And that's pretty exciting for us. And also now to have this event, this is one of the top three live gates in the history of wrestling in Canada. And with the conversion, now we've just surpassed our best live gate ever. I think this is a, our best gate in the history of the company. So uh, it was like over $1.2 million with the conversion, I believe. So it's very exciting and, uh, you know, big milestone. And now we have another international show that's gonna be even higher than that, multiple times higher, honestly, and the biggest thing in the history of the company. But I think what it has shown is the international growth of the company has been massive. We've seen some new TV milestones recently that we've hit in both Canada and the UK that have been great. The launch of Collision I think is gonna be great and getting that now going on TV here is important. And also the live events we're doing uh, in Canada definitely support, I think the great crowd we had tonight and last night uh, in Toronto shows we got a great market here and Montreal certainly one of the best wrestling markets in Canada and a really historic great wrestling market certainly. Thanks man. That's Tony Liam Crowley, comicbook.com. Again, two-part question. I apologize. Um, do we have a health update on Kenny Omega? 
Uh, I cannot update immediately. I think uh, you know we're all hoping for the best, but I think Kenny will hopefully be okay. I know it was a really hard hitting wrestling match. Absolutely uh, took a, a toll, but I think thankfully he's, he's okay and he was able to leave the ring with help, but largely under his own power. Uh, but it was a scary match, and I think it's good people are asking questions about it because uh, they beat the hell out of each other. Obviously, Will came out of it beat up too. Uh, and, and I think both men have a lot to be proud of, though, because it was one of the best matches I've ever seen, and I'm very grateful to Kenny for what he did tonight for the company. Good to know, hoping for the best. Uh, now a bigger picture question. You have three weekly TV shows going on. Uh, Rampage has its own distinct vibe with the logo. Uh, Collision, very reminiscent of Nitro. Dynamite still just kind of has the same font as the AEW logo. Can we expect uh, any sort of rebrand in terms of logos for Dynamite in the near future? Well, it's a great question. I think Dynamite very much as an identity as a show these are the things that really are great questions and it's a great insight you know i'll have to think about that a little bit more we've done things changed some of the patterns and and logos of dynamite but i've also seen people saying they loved the original and they loved the 2019 look and there's nothing wrong with that either there were great things about the show then there's great things about the show now i think uh using that look would be cool too in fact honestly when people said they wanted the 2019 shooting uh rainbow powder look back I was like well you know I love that look too so never say never uh, but that's a good thought too what you're saying about maybe some I, a different branding for dynamite specifically, yeah, specifically yeah. the font that's an interesting thought for sure um, you know I'll have to think about that uh, in doing like you said in doing four different wrestling shows a week and managing a massive roster and trying to do it at every level whether it's the main event matches uh, or people you're trying to build for the future and everything in between. I believe the wrestling sometimes you do lose the forest for the trees or the trees for the forest and then sometimes those things on production that's a great thought. So yeah, I'll think about that for sure. Uh, anything else? Uh, that was all. Thanks, Lee. Continue down the road right here. Hi, Tony. Lex Tan from Ring Psyche, News Talk Saga 960 AM. So, uh, again, congratulations on an amazing show, an amazing weekend of shows here in Toronto. And thank you very much for uh, doubling down on Canada. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that everybody here, the wrestling fans, are just thankful for that, honestly. Uh, so, I would like to ask you, uh, what is your biggest victory and success this weekend? I know it's very preliminary right now, uh, but uh, uh, what is your biggest victory and success this weekend? What lessons have you learned from, uh, from the first Forbidden Door leading up to uh, today? Well, I think breaking our biggest gate in the history of the company was a huge milestone, and so that, when we walked in the door, that was pretty exciting, and having one of the three biggest live gates in the history of Canada. That was a cool historical milestone. We were over $1.2 million, which I thought was very cool. And I think we broke the double or nothing record from last year, which and last year Forbidden Door, I think we're both in that ballpark, but I think last year was also over $1.2 million and we did a little bit more than that this year. So I thought that was pretty cool. And to be in the historical echelon of the all time top shows, I was like, well, that's pretty cool. And the crowd was so strong last night and we even bigger tonight and the energy felt so good from the start of the show, up and down. I thought it was one of our best nights. The energy of the crowd helped, and the wrestlers were amazing. The matches were amazing. I thought both companies brought their very best, and so I really was very proud. Some of the injuries were unfortunate, but everybody, I believe, long-term is gonna be okay, where it won't affect like long-term quality of life. It might affect mm -hmm. like when people get back in the ring next, but I believe everybody, hopefully, will be okay from this and it was one of the best wrestling shows I've ever been a part of, so I'm very proud. It did more buys than last year's show. It's up from Forbidden Door last year. I think it's up from Double or Nothing, which was a very good number, and so we've up from our last show and up from last year's show. So really strong domestic and international buys looking really good. Uh, so really, really proud of that. Last year's Forbidden Door was a massive success for both companies, and I think this year also a massive success, so I'm really proud of that and I think going into All In, which is one of the biggest shows in the history of the sport with the kind of momentum we've got in recent weeks from this amazing pay-per-view tonight, the debut of Collision, these last two episodes have been great and I think we can keep doing great episodes there. There have been some of our best episodes of Dynamite in recent weeks, a few really strong episodes over the last several weeks and I really believe we can keep it going through the summer, like I said, with the launch of Fight Forever. It's by design, we have a lot of things happening internationally and domestically. It's a great time for the company. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm proud of a lot of things. Thanks for asking. You give me a chance to talk about all the great things happening in Ada. Appreciate it. Is there anything else I can answer for you while you're here? Uh, well, this, uh, the, the second part was uh, about lessons that you learned. That's all. Great, okay. Um, that's a great question. 
Uh, like Brian said, some things are like freak accident things that you can't control. I wish, you know, nobody got hurt coming out of the matches and everybody would be okay. And it would, but it's a hard hitting sport and going into it, that's a big part of it. So, uh, you can't really beat yourself up about that. I was really proud of the show. I thought it's one of the best things we've ever done. Uh, top to bottom, I just thought it was a great card. I really enjoyed MJF versus Tanahashi as the opening match. I thought Punk versus, I mean, I can break the whole card down, but I think it was great. Punk Kojima was uh, tremendous and really a great match. And the crowd was tremendous for that match. And I really thought they brought it. And I thought the four-way match, the international championship was great. Orange Cassidy, like Brian said, he's on a great roll. Shibata, one year ago, arrived here, and it was a great moment at last year's Forbidden Door. And then again, full circle moments, like we talked about with Tony Storm and where she's come from last year's show. Look at Orange Cassidy and Shibata, now both great champions in wrestling, but they were fighting it out for that international title that got established last year. Look how far that title's risen in the world of wrestling. And then to have Zack Sabre Jr. back at Forbidden Door fighting for that title, and Daniel Garcia, whose story, whether I'm in Huntsville, Alabama, or Toronto, Ontario, at a house show or one of the great pay-per-views, people tell him he's a wrestler. And I get that chant everywhere he goes, and people care about that story and they believe in him. And so you had three great champions, plus somebody the crowd really believes in, so I thought that match really connected and was special. And then Jungle Boy and Sonata had an excellent match. Jungle Boy this weekend had a couple really excellent matches with the Stars of New Japan, and has had a couple great world title matches just in the past month. And then, look what happened after the match. I mean, that's clearly taken an emotional toll, but it was a great moment, I thought, with Jungle Boy and Hook. Obviously, uh, really gets people going, and I think the crowd really fit on that and got very excited and interested about that, and they really like Hook. Hook's a very popular wrestler. And so that was, I thought, great. Uh, what an awesome 10-man tag. What a great match with the Elite. And Eddie Kingston and Tomohiro Ishii who was amazing against the BCC with Takeshita and Shota. And that's the kind of match Forbidden Door is all about. And that rivalry has been such a huge part of AEW Dynamite and AEW Rampage and our shows as we've launched this company uh, really from day one. Moxley against Kenny has been a big part of the, the show. Moxley against the Elite. And then we talked about in that match when we got back to the fans, we did uh, Moxley and the uh, Eddie against the Young Bucks on Double or Nothing 21, and then you saw Eddie taking the bullet from that same finish that put Mox out at Double or Nothing 21, which I thought was a cool callback, and that was actually the first pay-per-view in wrestling with all the fans back in North America. And so a lot of cool moments, whether they were calling back to last year's Forbidden Door or the beginning of AEW just in the, that first half of the show. Mm -hmm. And then whether it was uh, Tony and Willow again, they, they had a great match and that's what AEW versus New Japan is all about. Uh, and of course you had the incredible, I mean we could talk for hours and hours about Kenny and Will again like you asked about and, and what, what uh, I'm proud of. I mean that's one of the all time great wrestling matches and again that's what this Forbidden Door is all about. Last year Will had one of the great matches against Orange Cassidy for the US title and now it's look where we've come. Uh, with Orange Cassidy, uh, look, but look where now Will has come, and look at Will and Kenny, and I thought their match at the Tokyo Dome was amazing, and people wondered how can you top that, how can you go to another level after the great match at Wrestle Kingdom at the Tokyo Dome, but they've somehow managed to have that great match and do it, and I thought that was just phenomenal, and then, uh, wow, uh, at, you know, to have Sting and Darby, to have Chris Jericho and Suzuki and Sammy, last year they won the match together, uh, this year, you know, added something different. Naito, uh, of course, has a lot of history with uh, Chris Jericho, the Intercontinental title, and I thought that was a cool thing. Last night at Collision, the crowd reacted so positively to Naito, and uh, I thought that was a very cool moment. And of course, uh, very excited to have those guys wrestling again in Hamilton on Wednesday with uh, Jericho and Sammy versus Sting and Darby. And then, of course, the main event, we talked a lot about it. Uh, it was tremendous. So, uh, Brian Danielson and Okada is a dream match. The crowd was into everything from the very beginning. Uh, and it was really cool because like Brian said, I think before they even locked up, it had that kind of energy where you knew this was something the crowd had always wanted to see. And I know I was so happy myself as soon as Final Countdown hit. The reaction was amazing. And I think, you know, even Brian, who was ready to go out and fight, it even put a smile on his face. So I thought that was a good sign. And Overall, it's been one of the really, really great, I think, weeks for the company. 
uh, the launch of Collision has been so positively received. Hopefully last night's show did well, but the, the debut episode did really, really well, and that's really, really good for the company, and I think that's awesome too. So that is another big win for us. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, John. Hi. Good uh, to see you. How are you doing? Uh, quick question. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's quick but four parts. Adam Cole, first, how's he doing most important? Um, then, uh, when do you expect him back? When did you find out? And when can we get Tom Lawler in there with him? Uh, well, it's a great question. I'm sorry that they weren't able to have the match. Uh, it's just terrible. Adam Cole uh, came sick today and we had to send him home. We didn't want to get everybody else sick. And uh, it's just, you know, especially uh, post lockdown, I think the measures are very careful. He's a very tough guy and he would love to fight, but he came in with a fever. And I think uh, he's got what I think is a flu. And he's probably, I think he's going to be okay. I hope he's going to be okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, in this case, you just got to be safe. Oh, yeah. And uh, so he should be okay, I, I hope. And uh, look forward to Adam Cole and MJF and a number of other great pairings that we'll put together competing in the tag team tournament uh, when he's better. But he wasn't cleared for tonight. So when Tom Waller's available and not doing New Japan, I still think it'll be a great match. I wanted to give Tom Waller a match still on the show. So I did give. Tom Waller's spot. He went out and took out his anger on Serpenico, and that was a, a nice match. And I wanted to do something for Tom, and I know he enjoyed getting out to wrestle for the fans, but he did want to go out there and have a good match with Adam Cole. So I'll keep that in mind. I like Tom a lot, and he's both a great commentator and a great wrestler and a great personality. Uh, so no, th thank you for asking. Uh, so but, you know, Cole, uh, he means a lot to the company. So it would have been great to have him participating tonight. I was really proud that we were able to have, like I said, the other nine matches really delivered to where I felt like the pay-per-view delivered one of our best shows ever. It would have been great to have that 10th match, though. Hi, Brandon Thurston, uh, Russell Alex. Uh, one, can you give us any update on if uh, All In will be broadcast, whether this on TV or streaming? And uh, secondly, usually the, the winners of the matches participate in the press conference uh, Punk won his match, but he's not with us here. I was wondering, if that, is that a conscious decision to give him the, the night off to be a presser? Well, the match was earlier in the card, and to be honest, I think that we did use a lot of people that won the matches. He's great in these, and he's been doing a lot of media. So he would have been great in this. I would be happy to do a press conference with him, and he's been doing a lot of great media this week to build up the shows. Um, so, no, I mean, I thought he had a great match tonight, and he's been a really big couple weeks having him back. It's been very positive influence for the company and I thought he had a great match with Kojima. He was a wrestling fan. It was something I really wanted to see and I was really glad he was willing to go out and have a great match in the Owen Hart tournament with Kojima after he had the big match last night. Uh, so, you know, it's the first time he's had, gone out and wrestled two back-to-back -back matches like that two nights in a row in a long time and I really felt like he delivered in a big way. So yeah, he would have been great and I think he's been doing a lot of media and I'm sure we'll get him out doing more media this week. Uh, to promote the shows, so no, I'd be very happy to have that, and uh, you know, he's a big part of what's happening in AEW right now. And, and, and all in, is, is there any update? You know, sure. All yeah, in? I'm sorry, it was two part. Yep, first part of your question. And uh, I am not ready to give an update on that exactly yet because of uh, some issues around the international broadcast and the timing. Very excited about all in and all out. Everyone's going to be able to watch them both, it's, and I will uh, make it clear the details, the timing and everything, and the availability soon, but I'm very excited about both events, and great to be in two of my hometowns back-to-back -back weekends with All In and All Out, and very cool that we get to celebrate. For me personally, I have uh, Fulham, Andy, Andy from uh, RevPro, who uh, Will was saying isn't answering his text message, which, by the way, Andy, you should be answering Will Osprey's text messages, jeez. Uh, uh, there's some people you don't have to answer their text messages, he's one of them. Uh, and uh, and uh, so, but I get it, it's a hard job, and I, I, if you got hundreds of messages, it's like me. I'm just kidding, but Andy's a big Arsenal supporter. And uh, we full and plays Arsenal on my mom's birthday, and that's the 26th, and then the 27th is all in. So it's going to be really cool. Uh, I don't have all the broadcast information, but it's going to be one of the best weekends. And then to go to Chicago and be able to offer all out. And I believe uh, now everyone knows the location. It's very cool. Uh, we have a great history of doing the show in the Northwest suburbs. I still really value everything at the Now Arena, but very excited to bring all out to the United Center.
which has been a great building for us. It was a great building for the debut of Collision, which again, speaking of my family, I had my dad uh, there for the premiere of Collision, which was really cool. I got to do that Father's Day weekend and spend it there with my family, uh, which was really nice. And uh, also Jason Sarlanis came and uh, the president of TBS and TNT at the show for the first time ever. It was a big deal. And Jason is more knowledgeable of wrestling than a lot of other TV executives because of the experience he has in the TV business. But to have a show like Collision that was in part because the head of the studio had a lot of confidence and wanted more AEW and a show that David Zaslav gave us a two hour slot and Jason Sarlanis worked side by side with me to program Collision, develop it, and have him there to see the launch of it and for Jason to be really happy and go tell Mr. Zasloff that we did really well and then to have a really good rating, that was a huge win. And then to have the pay-per-view be up year over year, it was a huge win. So uh, it, we're on a really good streak. So it's good timing going into All In and All Out. I'm really excited about the events. I don't have the exact details that, to reveal to everybody yet, but I promise everyone's going to be able to watch it. Thanks. Hey, Kevin Mickey with Sportsnet in Canada. Hey. Uh, just wondering, when you landed on Toronto as a host city for Forbidden Door as the second installment of it, uh, what were your expectations for the city, for the crowd, and did it live up to your expectations? It was exactly what I expected. I had the highest of expectations. This is one of my favorite wrestling cities. Uh, the top three gates in the history of wrestling in this city. I was at two of the top three. I actually spring break road tripped up here uh, for WrestleMania 18, <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm a big wrestling fan, and I love coming uh, to the best cities, the best markets, so whether it was going to see wrestling in the ECW arena in Philadelphia when I was a kid, or taking my spring break to Toronto, going to shows in Chicago, New York, I, it was really important to me to see shows in the best markets, and, uh, and then to see New Japan when they made their debut in LA and Long Beach, that was cool for me, so I, all over wrestling and then Will, you know, I've spent a lot of time with Will even before AEW in England uh, because I lived in England and I hung out with Will in London and to see how far Will's come and Zack Sabre too, that literally, and Pac, Ben, uh, you know, it's uh, amazing how uh, the British wrestling scene is like because of the work of Will and people like Will is getting back to where it was before they were locked down for so long, but uh, they have had a great scene for a long time and I'm really excited now AEW's going to come over and be a part of it. Uh, but yeah, when I came to Toronto, I was expecting one of the best wrestling cities in the world and they delivered it and uh, they showed why this is so great here. And I had high expectations and I feel like if anything, they exceeded it, but, uh, but I don't want to even say that because I expected it to be great and it was great. Thanks. And I don't want to, I'm excited to do more here. I, you know, obviously we've got shows in, nearby in the market in Hamilton this week, Wednesday and Thursday. I think there's going to be really big matches with big stars on those shows, uh, but this is a really big market for us going forward. It was a really success, you know, obviously being the biggest gate in the history of the company, we were very happy with it. John Pollock from Post Wrestling. Uh, earlier this week when Punk appeared on Dynamite in Chicago, he did drop in the line that he's a collision guy, he's not even supposed to be here. With the advertising, is that where you have Punk earmarked for now to be collision exclusive? Was this past Wednesday because of the Chicago factor a special occasion or have you left it open? It made so much sense with the show being in Chicago for CM Punk to make an appearance on Dynamite. He's been featured on Collision and I think we have stars that have been featured regularly on the shows. But you never know who's going to show up on different shows. The spontaneity that was very cool. Obviously the show did very well. The rating was up significantly this week. It did really well and I thought having that early in the show was something to show people this is going to be an exciting night. There was a lot of cool stuff on the show and as we approach Forbidden Door, of course CM Punk's been big on Collision, but I also wanted to bring him back to Dynamite in front of the Chicago crowd and show the fans that first of all, like I've said, there's no hard roster split, so that's why he, you know, he came and he made the reference which was great and it was a cool moment I thought got people talking and you never know where you're gonna see him so like he said he's been featured on collision is he you know supposed to be here who knows but it was a great segment and uh, collision did a great number leading into that and then dynamite did a great number for that we don't know all the numbers for collision uh, last night yet but hopefully that did really well and uh, it was great to have CM Punk then back tonight so I thought it was very cool, and obviously being in Chicago, it made a ton of sense.
Hi, Tony. Azeem Huck uh, from Toronto. I was here last time uh, at Coca-Cola Coliseum when you, AEW brought that great event, uh, Dynamite and Ramp Rampage, uh, and now, of course, for Collision and uh, Forbidden Door. I was wondering, so, you know, we see these venues getting bigger and bigger. We do have a 60,000-plus venue in the Rogers Centre. I was wondering if there's any foreseeable plans coming back to Toronto, perhaps for even a grander scale event, uh, such as how you're going to Wembley. Uh, we, as you mentioned, you know, there's two WrestleManias here in Toronto, and it's a great wrestling city, as you you know. So I was wondering, is there any foreseeable plans coming back to Toronto? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think coming back to Toronto, this venue, first of all, I want to thank the Scotiabank Arena. The last two nights have been exceptional. This is a dream booking for us in 